Hey, before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Hey, what's up Transformers fans, my fellow geek gals and geek guys, welcome to another episode of, well, actually, Transformers Time Warp, so I gotta change the screen here, but um, what we're doing is we're actually taking a look at uh, the MP11 mold for one of the cone heads, um, Dirge, this is a KO from Yes Model, YM06. So in my video about the DS01 mold versus the MP52 mold for uh, Starscream and the other Seekers, um, in the comments uh, I had a conversation with Ryan the regular Ravens fan, and in there I suggested that perhaps I do a review on uh, this dirge, to which Ryan answered uh, emphatically, yes, please do that. Uh, he's seen uh, a number of negative reviews on the Yes Model KOs or just the KOs in general for the Coneheads. And um, I wanted to give him my uh, input on what I think about this mold. Now, for details that I don't cover here, take a look at my Is the MP11 Mold Worth Keeping video. Um, I do go more into the KO mold there, and um, I'm not going to get into super detail about this whole thing with the unboxing. So uh, here we go. Nothing left in there. So right off the bat, we've got uh, a baggie of accessories. So, uh, and some free uh, Decepticon stickers, cool. Let's see, tape. Oh, nice easy clamshell to open, no tape. Just so you know my bias, uh, I like the MP11 KO mold from uh, Yes Model, aside from the arm guns, which are a little bit floppy on the other MP11 KOs that I've got. To my eye, this thing's color scheme looks really cool. Um, it's a little bit blown out here on this uh, tan color here on camera, but uh, it looks nice to my eye. And it looks uh, pretty darn high quality to me so far. Um, Nothing's jumping out to me that would say, uh-oh. Tidy paint apps and good details. I like the G1-esque detail there of the paint inside the, the scoops. Very cool. And of course, we've got Megatron. I mean, how can the MP11 mold be complete without uh, Megatron here? We've got the missile clusters for the alt mode. Nicely done. I mean, the, the quality control on this paint app stuff here that they do, I am just really impressed by um, the Yes Model uh, quality um, that comes out of these KOs. Second one, same as the other one. We've got an escapee hologram pilot and uh, looks like that's the Dr. Arkaville one and then another holographic pilot here and this is probably just the pilot pilot yep the regular pilot and then, uh, it's just really cool to see like something this small of uh, good quality from a KO and then we've got this, which I don't think I was able to figure out on the other video either. And I didn't really go looking to see what it was all about. But um, I believe actually when I did look at the instructions uh, or I found online or something, um, this is an adapter of some sort um, for holding, yeah, I think it's holding Megatron um, in the alt mode uh, underneath uh, the jet. So I think that's what that's for. And so far, uh, no instruction booklet, so you can't look it up. And then the base, which is branded with the Decepticon logo and uh, has the stand arm neatly tucked away in the back. I think that is such a cool feature that uh, Takara Tomy did, I'm assuming, originally.
Okay, so he comes with a pretty standard null ray here, but he also comes with this more stealthy uh, black missile here that um, fits inside one of these, I guess, bomb casings. So uh, you can put that and give him a more uh, beefy look as far as his armament, armament is concerned. And uh, that's a cool option. All right, <laughs> just having a little fun. Um, so there it is on him. And then here is the alternate missile also on him. Now, the interesting thing is, um, I'm not sure if these are misinstalled, these little uh, wing things, because um, I thought that the pegs were supposed to go into the holes on the wings here. Um, and when you do that, it's not so bad for the black missile, um, but it does point out a little bit away, away from the, uh, the jet. I don't know if that's militarily correct or if it's supposed to be parallel, but um, I thought it was supposed to be parallel. So uh, it's even kind of worse with just the null ray. Um, I guess just because the null ray is longer. Um, now it actually does look like it's a little bit worse. Uh, so I'm going to try flipping those two little, uh, you know, attachments around and see if they straighten uh, the missiles and the uh, null ray out. All right. Um, it's a good thing that I never thought about being an engineer because um, <laughs> design-wise, they're exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you flip them or, or not. Uh, so you're going to get the same result. So uh, yeah, forget, forget about that whole thing. So here is that big armament, but I was incorrect. It's not the black missile that goes in. It is the null ray and the null ray just slips into here and this slips over this so that you can still get that um, onto the adapter for the alt mode. And uh, this slides so that uh, you can use it um, in some other way. All right, and there he is in his alt mode, looking pretty cool, if a little plain. Um, I might have to get a sticker kit. I'm not sure if uh, the MP11 Dirge actually came with more details, but uh, the paint apps, you know, are, are pretty tidy, uh, really tidy. I really like how crisp and clean uh, yes model seems to make things um, and as you can see here we've got uh, the big old missiles um, on the underwings now and uh, that little slide there with the peg allows the missile to slide forward and back um, so you can align it uh, how you'd like and then indeed that hook um, that little claw thing does fit into this hole on the nose and uh, Megatron can be attached there. I don't know if he's supposed to sit here securely any more than this, but um, there you go, that does work. One thing I noticed with the Megatron gun is that the handle has this gap in it. Um, as you can kind of see right there. Um, it's supposed to extend down anyway so that it can be properly held by one of the cone heads or one of the other seekers. Um, but uh, yeah. That part, it's not fitting so, <laughs> that part, it's not fitting so well, um, you know, not flush, but it does do its slide thing like it's supposed to. Um, and uh, that handle, or excuse me, and the uh, shoulder stock uh, just came off, so I think I can just simply slide that back on. No problem. And there you go. Just thought uh, you might want to know that. The claw here, uh, while it does fit on the alt mode, um, surprisingly does not fit the holes on the base. It's actually too small of a peg, uh, so it's just loosey-goosey in there. Um, but what does fit in there are the missile racks. So there you go, you've got some place to put those missile racks if you want to on the stand. And we do have this extra head here, which if uh, me peeking underneath the alt mode is correct, the difference is, is that this head has the uh, black cone and not the gray cone um, like the alt mode actually shows. So um, I'm not sure if the face is any different, but uh, the uh, cone tip definitely is. And there you go. You'll have an option between the gray and the black. And these two parts have a similar styling to what we see on the knees of uh, Dirge, 
and I don't know exactly where these are going to go or if they are replacements for those for a different look or what, but um, maybe we'll find out when we look at bot mode. All right, so far there's not much that's obvious that uh, doesn't fit well. Um, this back piece is not uh, sitting down all the way. Um, these portions here are not actually uh, pushing together. Um, and uh, I saw on the underside that this tab is supposed to go into that uh, same shaped slot there on the other piece. But when I tried to press down on one of these, it seemed like maybe the uh, tab was actually too big for the slot. And so I'm thinking that's the same on this side or the other side. Uh, and I'm not sure which one of these I tested first, but um, initially, but uh, yeah, neither of them seems to want to fit. So I'm thinking that I might have to actually file that down if I want it to fit into that um, recessed tab area. So um, the wings don't actually go flush right out of the box. Um, I don't know if this is the way it was with the official Takara Tomy version, but uh, these wings look like they're, they're supposed to, um, you know, they look like the contour is supposed to sit flush, but I guess they don't because underneath they've got this little stop tab and it does fit into that little indentation there um, like it's supposed to. So I'm guessing that these wings don't really um, go any flatter than that. Uh, so other than that, um, it looks good. I like it. And um, I think so far, uh, this is a good option for the MP11 uh, Dirge Conehead. Taking a look at the landing gear here. One wheel. There we go. Again, those tidy paint apps. It's, I, just, I am really just blown away by how tidy the paint apps are. Um, this one maybe not so much, but still looks good. Um, okay, and then the front wheel here opens up no problem. Landing gear comes down. I think this, I'm not sure if this is actually um, die cast or not, but uh, the wheel rolls okay. So let's see how this thing rolls. Yeah, you know, hard to tell with uh, such small wheels and being plastic like they are, but uh, it does roll, uh, it seems to at least. If not, it's just dragging on those plastic wheels. So I guess time will tell, and uh, I don't plan on dragging this bot around a whole lot, so um, I doubt those wheels are going to get that chewed up. So there you have it. Um, fit leaves something to be desired, but overall still, um, still a good alt mode. And I did open up these panels, and they've got nice engine detail there, so that's cool. Um, also, let's see. Sorry about the bump there. So we do have this little drag fin, too, like we have on the MP11s uh, otherwise. And uh, that's looking pretty nice as well. Cool. All right. Okay, this guy is not the easiest thing to pose. Articulation-wise, I'd say it's lacking. Maybe once I get to play around with it a little bit more, I'll uh, find that I like it better. But um, it can pose, and it can stand, uh, despite the fact that it has some, you know, um, unsubstantial feet features. So there you go. There's Dirge. Um, one thing I'd say I'd be careful of when you're transforming is the cone. Um, I was just trying to get it done and uh, I think I marked up the top of the cone a little bit so um, yeah be careful of that because the whole cone head does have to get through and uh, take your time position things right and uh, get a tutorial if you're not sure about what you're doing um, I could have used a tutorial but I've uh, transformed this mold now you know a few times and uh, I feel fairly comfortable with it but I did end up messing up the top of the cone I think so Word to the wise. Um, as far as head sculpts are concerned, this head sculpt, yeah, sorry, too close, too close. Um, yeah, I gotta get them sideways for you to see, I'm sorry. Uh, so that head sculpt doesn't look so bad on camera. In person, uh, I like it much less. 
Um, this head sculpt I much prefer. So uh, I guess if I want to change out the cone color, I might be able to just by unscrewing this thing because it looks like you have to unscrew it anyway to um, replace the head. So uh, either I replace just the faceplate or uh, replace the cone and the faceplate. But there you go. You do have a different face sculpt for this guy, and I do like this one much better. As far as what these pieces are, um, I don't know. They're still a mystery. Uh, I haven't found an obvious place on the bot where they fit. As I have seen at least one other uh, person note, um, you can also fit the coronation um, kit from MP11 on this guy, at least on the shoulders. It has uh, this little receptacle for that. Um, I was wondering what that was for a moment, and then I remembered. Uh, so you can do the shoulder pauldrons from MP11 Starscream, the coronation version. And uh, let's get to the nitty gritty of the articulation. Starting with the head articulation, there is not a lot. It leaves uh, a lot to be desired. Um, you know, you do have your turn. Uh, you've got three, 360 turn, right? Uh, you've got a little bit down. So, you know, he can, he can look down, so not a bad deal there. Um, can't look much up. Um, the head does want to, or does slide forward a little bit so that you can move the neck around, but, um, you know, so you can get a look down like that, which is very, uh, cartoon and, uh, comic book like, um, but not a lot of range of motion. Okay, never mind. Actually, it does, the head peg does push back. Apparently, it does rotate. So you can get him to look up. So there you go. That's the key to that, that down articulation. Okay, I'm getting it now. All right, so this head peg rotates here at this point. So um, just make sure that you're actually rolling that, not just moving the head, and you will get up and down. And um, there is no real uh, side to side for the head. Uh, but there you go. Basic articulation is good and can be tweaked somewhat. This is, I'm trying to make sure I don't like snap something or, well, I'm trying to turn it. So a little bit of a trick when you're trying to get him to turn his head sideways, might have less articulation there. Uh, looks like he really wants to go forward and more straight when you want to tilt his head down really significantly. Um, so there you go. That's the uh, head articulation. There seems to be some limitations there. Also, when I was transforming the guy, be careful. Um, I thought I saw some white stress at the peg um, because the head was not clearing the backpack here uh, as I was trying to transform it. So um, be careful not to force it beyond which it's uh, really capable. Arms, you know, your standard MP11 uh, articulation. It's got the 360 on a ratchet. And it's conflicting right now with its uh, wing back here. And there's that tab. Got to get that in there. All right, one second. Okay, so... What is that? I've got my Starbucks cup. All right, Game of Thrones here for a moment. Did you see that Starbucks cup over there? Starbucks cup. All right, so as we were talking about, the arms do have that 360 rotation on a ratchet. Um, they've got, let's see, this bicep swivel. Yes, bicep swivel. Um, got a double-jointed elbow for almost uh, that 180. And we've got a hand rotation. Yep, wrist, no problem. We've got these multi-jointed fingers. Um, you know, MP11 did give us some articulation in the hands, but uh, those three fingers are joined together. Uh, you can still get cool uh, poses for the hand, though. So standard MP11 hand there. Um, you know, like with all the MP11s, no waist swivel, no ab crunch. Shoulders go above 90 degrees. We do have these flip-up vents that show the missiles, so very cool. 
And this guy um, seems to fit fairly well when these uh, chest pieces have to come down onto the body. Um, I wasn't noticing one necessarily sitting higher than the other. I did have a problem with that on uh, one of the other um, MP11 KOs, but there you go, sits nicely. And I guess this is probably because it's the MP11 mold, but these hip flaps um, don't really uh, do much. Um, you'd hope that they'd kind of get out of the way more, but they don't flip up this way. So they're not very good hip skirts. Um, the leg only comes up about yay far because you can't really do the full kick forward thing because that stupid little hip skirt is in the way. So I really wish I could get 90 degrees, but I can't. Uh, there is this hip swivel here, which is good. Uh, you've got You've got uh, hip kick out to here. Um, also, this this skirt gets in the way too, so you can't go out for the full Van Dam. Um, knee does go more than ninety, slightly more than ninety, so that's good. You got your toe, which swivels, and you've got your heel, which also swivels, which can help with. Uh, stabilizing the figure, although it is of limited use in certain positions like the pose that I uh, got this guy into. And as far as kicking back, it can kick back some, but not a lot. Let's see, I'm a little scared to do this. Not sure how far this really goes. Um, but you can see that it's kind of hesitant to kick back. So it can kick back some, it just doesn't kick back a lot. Um, and I'm a little afraid to try to go further than that because of the resistance I'm feeling. So there you go, not the most um, posable figure, but uh, as far as a cone head goes, which if I'm just wanting representation in my collection, which is what I'm really going for, and this guy does look uh, pretty cool anyway, um, even without su being super articulated, then um, yeah, I'd say this guy is uh, good for my collection. One thing of note is the fact that this guy actually does, the I, I've seen with Yes Model, you can really get this guy to peg together better than um, people seem to have had experience with with the official MP11 mold. So um, it took a little bit of doing. This chair actually rotates um, in the cockpit area, so um, it may not want to peg in very well, but if you do get that chair angled up properly uh, straight with that peg, then you can peg it in. As you can see, there is not a lot of peg showing on this guy, um, and I really was able to tab them well together. So uh, unlike what you've heard with horror stories about the MP11 mold. This guy is not um, a huge floppy mess. The torso is sticking. So uh, that is a cool, um, I guess, improvement over the official MP11. And just a couple of other additional notes. I don't like how far back these wings extend in his bot mode. I mean, that takes up a lot of depth. Um, in your display case or wherever you're going to put them on display. I wish this wing could fold up or spin around and, and do something else uh, aside from this. Also, uh, these slides, as I've seen on, um, I guess it's a KO that I got of MP11 uh, Starscream. Uh, these slides, they don't really satisfactorily click. It seems like they're supposed to have a little spot here where maybe they actually feel like they click so that they'll stay. But in the process of, uh, you know, showing this guy off, they actually did slip down past the heel. So uh, at which point you're going to drag that point or you're not going to be able to stand the bot at all. So um, not very satisfied with how these things don't lock into place, but um, friction seems to be good enough that they will stay in place, um, you know, for minor handling. Uh, and for you know your display so uh there you go just a couple things on those uh wings there at his legs and of course in order to determine whether this ko of dirge from yes model is actually 
Masterpiece Scale, let's bring in one of our Masterpiece Scale standards, MP10 Convoy, AKA Optimus Prime. And using our Mixelpix Masterpiece Scale level uh, checker, we'll use this to see whether or not these two are indeed in scale. All right, so you definitely see that Dirge is shorter than Optimus Prime, but what really matters is how they're supposed to compare according to the G1 scale chart from Freelance Graphics. And as you can see here, we have Dirge, and now we have Optimus Prime there, and wow, you can see that Dirge is supposed to be substantially smaller than Optimus Prime. Actually, the top of Dirge's cone is supposed to come up to just below the top of Optimus Prime's chest. So as we have seen with MP11, the MP11 mold is just too large to be scale for Masterpiece. So the MP52 mold definitely hit the scale correctly, although I do like the size of the MP11 mold compared to MP10. So in actuality, the MP11 mold with Dirge is not MP scale, but it's going to be good enough for my collection. Okay, so how do I feel about Yes Model's YM06, their KO version of MP11 Dirge? Overall, I like it, and I think it's going to be great for my collection. I actually have not seen the floppiness of the null rays on them as much as we saw with the other MP11 KOs. The tabbing on the wings is an issue, and the posability and the balance on these feet also seem to be an issue. I don't know if I'm going to have that problem with any other MP11 KOs, but this guy definitely has a problem with balance. I ended up having to tilt him forward ever so slightly and bend the knees in to get him to stand balanced. So as you probably know, if you've got Masterpiece toys, some of them you pose simply to, uh, you know, hide the weaknesses. The other negative thing that I'll mention is that YM06 doesn't come with any instructions, and I'm not sure why that is. Looking back at my review of the MP11 mold using other Yes Model MP11 KOs, it doesn't look like any of them came with the instructions either, but it's just kind of interesting that it doesn't come with any instructions. Overall, I'm happy with this guy, and I would give it a solid two thumbs up for a KO cone head. So if you're able to find one of these, I think you can buy with confidence. That's it. Thanks for watching this episode of Transformers Time Warp. I'm Mike. If you like what you've seen, then please help me out by hitting that thumbs up button, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that notification bell, and leaving a comment in the comment section below. Join the conversation. I'd like to hear from you. And if you have friends that would like this content as well, then please let them know about Mixelpix, where you can find out about Masterpiece Transformers from an older perspective with Transformers Time Warp. You can find out about the newer current MP Transformers with MP Squared Reviews. You can find out about Transformers Prime toys with Transformers Prime Time, and you can learn about the Transformers community and other interesting Transformers topics maybe in the future with Iacon 2 Archives, which is more a documentary type show about our fandom, as well as MP1 shots for short subjects, which are focused on non-Transformers toys and media. So there you go, a host of programming, and tell a friend. Until next time, happy collecting, everybody.